Let's have a look how we use logs to solve that 1, 0, 8 dreadful question. Let's go there. Okay, and Vela, you, you, it's over to you. Let's see how do we apply logs to this thing. Let's take logs on both sides. Okay, here we go. So, we're so that log. will be log. The log of 1.08, also the power n, equals to the log of 2. Log of 2. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry about log that. Log of two. 2. Log on both sides. So now we can apply the log law. We can take n to the front of the log, which will be n log. 1.08 equals to log 2. Remember, we're looking for n, so we can divide by log 1.08 on both sides. Log 2 divided by log 1.08. So we can use the calculator, and if you use the calculator, we'll get the decimal. Just to summarize this, guys, what, we, what did we do? We took logs on both sides, and then what did we do with that n? And then we took n to the front of the log. That's right, using the log law. Now, what we need to do is we're going to use the calculator to work out the answer to this equation. Here we go. All right, do you want to work it out for me quickly? Let the me log of for you over the, the log, log of 1.08. And that one will give you 9,006468. Okay, and if you if you look at this, it, it's going to round off. It's going to round off to about nine years. Do you agree? So if you go back here, let's have a look. N equals nine years. So it's going to take this investment nine years to double. Quite interesting. But now, of course, the problem comes is what about quarterly? Hey, exactly. and we need to we we need to look at an example. So let's let's go there. Let's look at the second example now. Suppose that the interest rate from pause investment was 8% per annum compounded quarterly. Look at the difference now. The first one it was compounded annually. This one is compounded quarterly. How long will it then take for the investment to double in this case? What do you think on this one? You see, guys, the interest rate is quarterly. And Vela read that. Now, what do we do with the quarterly interest rate? We've got to divide the interest by four. Oh. But now what happens to the N, the time period? Let's have a look at this. Okay, clearly the interest calculated is four times per year. This means that the quoted nominal, remember that word, nominal annual rates of 8% must be divided by four. But now if we look at the time period, the number of quarters in one year is one, year times four quarters gives you four quarters in that year. If you look at it over two years, what happens now? Well, two years times four quarters gives you eight quarters. And if you go over three years, the number of quarters in three years is going to definitely be three times four quarters is 12. So what happens over n years? And this is so critical to the calculation. What happens in n years? Well, here we go. n times four gives us four n quarters. So what do we do with the interest rate? Divide it by 4 and the n we multiply by 4. So remember in these calculations divide the interest rate by 4 and multiply the n by 4. So let's let's look at the calculation. You want to take it from here? Let's look at the calculation now. We all know the formula as if just as you could say that the interest is divided by 4 because it's compounded quarterly and the exponent is 4n. Let's plug in the values of A and P, as you can see. Let's deal with the bracket first. And in the bracket, we get 1.02. And let's now divide by 3,000 on both sides. And if you do that, we will have 2 equals 2. And then this bracket. Now, let's go back to our magic we did in the first example, where we apply the log laws. So we take log on both sides. Yeah. Then we can take the exponent to the front of the log and then divide by log of 1.02 on both sides. What do we get if we do that? We'll get this decimal. But remember, we're not looking for 4n, but we're looking for n. So we have to we get rid of this 4 next to n. What do we do? We divide by 4 on both sides and we will have this decimals as you can see and the final term is eight years and 
nine months. You might be you might be asking yourself, how did we get the nine months? You'll see you'll see in the notes that in the web notes, in the workbook, you've got the nine months. We've got eight years and nine months. But how did we get the nine months? So I think we need to just elaborate on this. Let's have a look. Yes. Do it. Right, we, we have an answer of n equals 8, comma, this dreadful decimal here. Now, you know that we've got 8 years. We know that. And what Veran has said is that it gives you 9 months. But the problem is, people, how did we get the 9 months? Now, let me show you how this works. And I, I want you to focus on this because it's, um, it's, a, it's a very simple calculation. But what it needs is it needs a little bit of explanation here. So should we go there and check it Let's out? Let's try it. Yeah. Okay. Now what's, what Inveda is going to help me, he's going to put the number in the calculator. You take the decimal. All right. Nought comma seven zero or seven five zero six nine seven one nine five. So we've got this decimal. It comes after the eight. And it is not a, it's not a whole number, but it's definitely, we can almost visualize it as a fraction of the 12 months okay it's a, and if you multiply this what are we gonna get here should we do that you want to plug that number in for me there naught comma seven five zero six nine seven one nine five multiplied by 12 okay and what we get is a number that says nine comma zero zero eight three six six Four. Now, rounding this off, here we get the nine months. Do you see that? The nine months. So we have eight years and nine months. Pretty, pretty basic. And you have to do that. Normally, you will always have to keep your answers in years and months. So follow that little calculation, nothing in it, and um, you'll get the full marks for this question. What do you have to do now? Let us pause the DVD and give you the chance to try activity yeah. one. Have fun. The next example we're going to do together is on the depreciation. Let's have a look on that example. A motor vehicle costing 150,000 depreciated at a rate of 9% per annum on the reducing balance method. Calculate how long it took for the car to depreciate to a value of 60,000 under these conditions. Here is the formula that I'm going to use. And now let us plug in the values. I know that the present value is 150,000. And my future value is what? Is 60,000. And remember the decimal, which is 0 0.09. But what I'm looking for, I'm looking for N because I'm looking for time. What we're going to do now, let's sort out the bracket. That's what we get. And we can divide by 150,000 on both sides. That would give us 0 0.4 equals to 0. 9, 1 all to the power of n and now we apply the log law so we can take logs on both sides and we can take n to the front of the log and divide by log 0 0.91 on both sides and this would give us this decimal so surely it will be nine years and nine months very interesting example, but let's get a little bit more devious, hey, Mvelo, why, you know, if I look at this, we're going to go monthly now. 